Hey guys, this is Brenda from my Wee Wee Burns Cradle. Two videos in one day. <laughs> I am uh, editing a video, so at the moment you'll be able to see two videos today, which is, I haven't done that in a long time. It's so nice to be here. Today I have Megan Hope, and I hope the lighting doesn't go in and out like I've noticed it's been happening on my phone a lot. I'm not sure how to change that. But anyways, I'm here to do Suzy Q's 10 question tag and it's called, I have my laptop in front of me, my new 10 question New Year's tag. And I will link her video down below. So check that out and also a card. So yay. Oh, it's so exciting. Okay, she has 10 questions. And she is a heavy little one. You are heavy, Megan. Oh my goodness. Look, little bald spot. Oh, she is so sweet. When she when her hair falls out, because it will happen on silicones eventually in the future, I would love to re reroot her with um black hair. So to match. To match me, she is my mini me and eric's mini me as well oh she's heavy i'm just gonna lay her here so she's not so heavy on my arms okay um number one do you stay up until midnight on new year's eve um it depends on like years ago yeah i did um ever since having kids I have three sons. They're all older now. So my youngest is 13 and I do share my kids with share custody. That's all I'll say about that. But some years the boys are at the other house and some years they're with me. So it depends. When I have the boys, I'll try my best to stay up until midnight. And we'll play games, uh, either most of the time video games like Mario Party or something where we all can play. And sometimes board games like when they're younger, it was board games or card games like Uno, Scooby. And anyways, I think there's more questions about that. So do I stay up until midnight? It depends on how tired I am or how not tired I am. So... It changes every year. <laughs> Number two, have you ever held or attended a New Year's Eve party? I've never held one, although just for my own family, um, like when the boys are here. But as for an actual like party where I invite people over, no, <laughs> never. <laughs> I'm too introverted for that. I'm an extreme introvert. I don't even like calling people on the phone. That's how that's how bad I am. Um, however, I used to attend like more official parties back when I was younger, like in my early twenties and late teens, because I went to university and we would have university dorm. I lived in the dorm. I lived in the co ed dorm. And yeah, there were parties. There were a lot of parties. Um, but that was years ago. That was like in the 90s. <laughs> um, early 90s. Um, I feel like I'm yelling in her ear. Have you, okay. Do I have a favorite one worth remembering? Mm, not really. It's, I, the best memories I have are with my sons, with my family and playing the games together with them and sharing my, like we'd have what well, maybe watch a movie. So sharing my favorite things with them was so fun. And especially when we share those same interests is so cool. So, but there's not a particular year that I remember. Um, number three, do you, do you watch 
a New Year's Eve countdown to midnight entertainment TV program. <laughs> it varies year by year. And to be honest, now that there's satellite, I can watch a countdown anytime I want. <laughs> if I want to watch Australia's countdown, if I want to watch um, whatever is on the satellite, uh, most of the programs here, will, they'll start doing a midnight thing, like my time, like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., I might watch theirs. Oh, that's my, my video is finished editing. So I'll upload that one soon. So, but there's no favorite one that I like watching. I just put on whatever's on the TV. If we're watching TV, we might be watching a movie or we might be playing games. There is no tradition of watching anything. But I will, like say if it's 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., I will surf through the channels to see which which country or part of the time zone is celebrating the countdown. <laughs> um, number four, do you wear party hats or pop party poppers? Pop, oh, pop party poppers to roll in the new year. Um, it depends. When the kids are little, yeah, we might do some banging on whatever I have. I did buy a couple of years. I buy like those those horn thingies, but it's not a tradition. Basically, I was kind of poor back in the day, so I did not buy anything extra. Like I spent most of my money at Christmas. I had nothing really left for New Year's, only like for food and appetizers, not really the hats and the and the stuff like that I didn't have the money for that so no if I did have the money I think I bought I tried buying it once it was like $50 for a kit like back in the day and that was just too much to me I don't know um so no I don't go out I mean they're you wear them once I remember I thought I would save them but then why bother saving they're so flimsy and take up space so sorry for the people who do love that stuff it's just it's it's just an extra materialistic thing that i don't need so sorry no i do not buy normally i don't um do you prepare a special meal for new year's day i guess it's um, at Christmas, we always have, like, the turkey, the dressing, mashed potatoes, gravy, corn, a uh, side of cheese and pickles and olives and buns and butter. And um, I can't think of anything else. But normally with New Year's, we have all that again, but add ham or we might add pierogies and meatballs. Stuff like that too. And then appetizers always. I also have a Christmas table. And it's set up like over there. I um, is filled with like baked goodies. Uh, uh, treats. Like jelly beans. Christmas. Jube jubes. Chocolates. Um, candy canes. <laughs> I'll, I'll insert a picture of my Christmas table. But I will leave up the table like all all through the holidays past new years and then i'll take it down <clears throat> and that is filled with like little snack goodies um number six do you make new year's resolutions if so do you end up keeping any of the resolutions that you make um i think i tried when i was younger like in my 20s i never kept them and I always felt disappointed in myself if I like didn't I was not able to she's getting heavy okay so I'm just starting to talk to you guys okay so um <laughs> oh I feel that was kind of getting heavy on me oh I am totally like just running. <laughs> um 
I used to keep new new year new year's resolutions but when I didn't fulfill them or break them not on purpose it just happened like most of the time trying to eat healthier lose weight exercise um I felt horrible when it didn't pan out so that would make me like kind of depressed and people around me are still keeping their resolutions and then there's me big failure so i ended up not doing any resolution anymore i just continue to keep my healthy habits my my gratitude uh behavior um my positive thinking i just want to continue being the try to be a good person as I can be and help others and just have a positive mindset of myself and when I have that upon myself I can share it easier and it's more natural when I help others or be positive for others it all starts with me and mindset and if I have that resolution and I break it I feel or I used to feel very disappointed and disgusted with myself and poor me attitude and why me attitude and it was just unhealthy and I just don't do that anymore I just try and continue to keep my positivity so no. <laughs> um, as for things like around the house like for instance reboarding I'm a huge procrastinator anyway so I've been wanting to reborn I've been wanting to learn how to knit or crochet and um, I even have like everything I need to do these things but I just never get around to doing it and instead of beating myself up for it I just move on and um, like sure I can have goals that I can try to accomplish like try to get to reboarding try like at least try so but if I don't get there I won't beat myself up so instead of resolutions I have goals that I try to achieve and if I don't well it's okay it's not the end of the world um okay my laptop's over here now um let's see do, 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 do. that was number six number seven what was the best thing that happened to me in this past year 2020 i was hired onto a new school um actually two wonderful things happened um if some of you have been following me for a while, many years ago, I got sick and I had to resign my teaching career. And I was dealing with um, a lot of hospital things. And I thought personally, what I should do about that is resign the field and concentrate on my health. And now that I look back, People said, why didn't you go on medical leave? <laughs> but I guess I could have, but I didn't. I just thought it was the right thing to do. I mean, if I'm not going to be at school teaching, I'll be home on a medical leave. I didn't think it was, I don't think it was proper to do that. But I guess, um, <laughs> I guess I could have. I had the insurance for it, but anyways um i did quit my teaching career and in 2019 i decided to or 2018 i forget i decided to try my dream of being my own home daycare provider in my home i did the job before when i was on mat leave with my youngest son and i loved it so I decided I got sick, I quit my field, and I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try and do home daycare. I'm home anyway, so why not? So I did do the home daycare, and I loved it. The only thing I didn't like was the income was way less than teaching, a lot less than teaching. 
So um, I thought I did it for a few, for a little bit. And also because I don't have a separate space for my daycare, I had to use my living area. And um, it made me cringe when the kids would like accidentally spill things or break things like I don't know if you know this but my carpet has these various white spots and it's because one of my girls my daycare girls she had a bottle and she, I would let her um just carry it with her wherever she was and it used to drip and the milk spot stained <laughs> or cleaned I don't know if it stained my carpet or cleaned my carpet <laughs> but I have white spots everywhere so anyways um I just couldn't live like that I couldn't live like that so I started sub teaching and I went back into the field I got my foot back into the door and then I started getting term positions because that was all that was available at the time. And um, there was a term position that I achieved and it was for my dream position of being a resource teacher. And I loved it. I loved it so much. The only thing, there was something I was nervous about and that I didn't realize that a, a resource teacher is under the admin. And then, like, you have this hierarchy, 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 whatever, hierarchy of, of positions. And, like, the superintendent, well, first, the minister of education, they have a team, and the superintendents, and then principals. And then resource came right, or under the vice principals, principals, vice, and then resource. And all that responsibility was like, oh, my God, <laughs> it's too much. Like, I knew what was happening in, the, like, it's just kind of, I didn't, it's the responsibility, it was, like, a lot. So, I decided to apply at my dream school, <laughs> which was another dream of mine for years, and I got into a school as closer than the other school i was teaching at the other school for 16 years and um as much as i love the people i love the kids i love the school um the travel the travel part is what i hated that road was terrible on my vehicle um so anyways this new school it's the same pay because it's the same school division and yet, it's at a closer area. So I'm like, a position came up, a term position. And that's why I'm in now. So I did. I got two dream jobs achieved. And that is wonderful. Um, I also am extremely thankful that um, my family, except for my youngest, but there's three of us. My fiance and I were in essential positions, so we didn't lose any jobs. We didn't touch wood still because we don't know what the future is like, even though the vaccine is still here. Um, I just want to be very grateful that we were still employed throughout this whole pandemic thus far and still going. So I have to be very thankful and grateful for that fact. Um, so it, it was a hard year for a lot of people but I want to be thankful that um and also I'm an introvert my fiance is introvert so that connection with other people like we didn't really have friends anyway I mean we have acquaintances but we never went to visit people maybe family of course but um so we didn't really miss out. We were very grateful that we're, this is our usual lifestyle anyway. So we didn't, we didn't really suffer a lot. Oh my computer. Okay. <laughs> so that, that is the best thing. I got two of my dream positions achieved. And the best thing is that 
we were employed throughout this whole time. So, um, number eight, what made you feel worthwhile this past year? Well, of course, being a teacher has wonderful rewards, especially of little kids. They are so cute and they're so honest and they're raw and I really love it. And I love teaching them new things and then their eyes light up and they're so happy with themselves and proud of themselves and self-confidence is key. Um, I've had my bouts of anxiety and depression for many years ago and I've overcome a lot of things so I just want to share how I went from such a dark place to such um, the opposite the positivity and appreciation and gratitude and I want to share that so <laughs> anyways um, there's so many things that made me worthwhile uh, um, I thought about quitting the Reborn community, like the YouTube community, many times. You can tell because there's a span of when I don't do any videos, I'm just not in the mood and I don't. It's not that I'm trying to hide the negativity in my mind from you, it's just see when I'm just rambling, I'll just ramble. Who wants to listen to that? <laughs> like. <laughs> But, so I want to come on and share my happy moments with you guys. So, I I used to share, like, the bad moments, too. But that was cringe. So, and those cringe videos are still up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's the number one rule of YouTube. If you want to grow, you have to accept the cringe. <laughs> and I have a lot of cringe from years ago. Um... I don't want to make cringe. Well, <laughs> um, number nine. Do you have a project or goal that you've been putting off that you want to get done in the coming year? <gasps> so many things. <laughs> I told you I'm a procrastinator. Reborning? Maybe. But it's on the back burner. The number one important thing is that my fiance and I, we own 32 acres of pristine wild off the grid land and we've owned it since 2000 uh, I forget 2013 and nothing has been done there like all that we do is camp and hike and day camp there I've never spent the night out there yet because we we did attempt to spend the night one time but I got scared, so we, we quickly went off. There's a lot of weird noises. When you're in a 32 acre with no neighbors around you at all, and you hear all these weird things at night, it's kind of scary. But what I really want to do is create a seasonal place and camp there overnight. I want to really camp there overnight. I have to get over my fears of bears and like we have bears, moose, lynx, coyotes, wolves. I'm not really scared of the lynx um, or the deer. I mean, I remember I had deer like four feet away from me. And it was startling to see them there, to just see them there. But it didn't scare me. I'm not scared of them. But I am scared of the bears. Bears is what I'm scared of. <laughs> so... I have to get over my fears of spending the night out there. And that's what I really want to do is have a seasonal and build. Uh, Francis has started building a little uh, pallet shed or a pallet cabin. And we'd love to finish it. So, and, or keep working on it at least. So, what are you most grateful for this past year? Well, it's kind of like the same as number eight. I'm grateful for many things that made me feel worthwhile. <laughs> so I think they kind of tie in together. I'm just grateful for being alive. Uh -huh. There are many times, sorry. <laughs> there have been many times when I think, thank you for being here. 
I get to look, see things, feel things, smell things, touch things. And I'm just thankful and grateful for being here, for being alive. Ramble, ramble, ramble. That's all I do. Anyways, guys, I have to get going. Uh, today is New Year's Eve. Happy New Year. And sorry if my clap is a little loud. I was editing my other video and I was clapping. <laughs> it was kind of loud. So I'm like, ooh, I have to be careful. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of my channel and encouraging me through comments to keep going and. I love reading all of your comments. It means a lot to me, guys. And until next time, love you. Machan, guys. Machis. Machan, guys. Love you. Give me a high five. Yeah. Bye, guys. Love you.